This car has a secret. I'll tell you about it when we come back. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Fat Guy Productions. I am Paul, coming to you, as always, from beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. And this casting, a Hot Wheels custom Firebird, has a dirty little secret. And you'll see it as we start working on this car. Um, man, I hate it. And I'll, I'll tell you this. It's not a vampire. Let's get to work. So today's volunteer is this custom Firebird, and uh, it's it's in gold and it looks pretty good. I mean, you know the paint is terrible, but overall it looks pretty decent. It's got decent uh, axles and glass, a working hood. You know it's complete, but this car has some surprises in store for me. So, as always, I'm going to go ahead and start by getting this car apart. And for that, I'll use shielded drilling and my VIX bits. Uh, if, if you're not into this, you're really missing out on a great way to not only drill apart your castings, but to prep the post as well. Um, little dab of oil, and then the VIX bit will do its thing, and this car will come apart. Best laid plans, huh? Well, they don't always just pop right apart. Sometimes you got to persuade them a little. So I got my screwdriver, and there she goes. And like I said, it's got great axles, okay? It's going to need new wheels, of course. Now, here's the first little surprise in store for me. And this is minor. The, the interior it should just pop right out, but it's like stuck in there. And... While I'm trying to get this this sucker out, you know, I kind of gently poke and pry at it. I'm not, I'm not being overtly crazy here or anything, but it, it really is resisting coming out. And if you look right there, see that? That's a piece of the windshield. That's a little tab from the bottom of the windshield. I think the windshield on this might have been broken at one point in time. And I think somebody put some glue down in there and then stuck the windshield back in the slot where it came out of. And that's why everything's kind of stuck in there. That, that's my hypothesis. Um, especially because, look, you know, this windshield is, is hanging on for dear life to this interior. It really is not letting go. Um, it looks fantastic. It's staying in there. So I'm not going to mess with it. But we'll get to that a little bit later on. All right, it's time for a goo drop. Warm liquid goo phase beginning. I gotta tell you, for a simple little convertible, this this is a pretty epic goo drop. I wish I had a nice new clean full jar for this. Um I'll go ahead and probably replace this jar soon, but you know, that was pretty good. Warm liquid goo phase complete. Now, I had mentioned that this wasn't going to be a problem with vampires, and it's not. Plain and simple, this is the worst body I've ever had. Um, it's not chipped up or banged up or anything like that. But it's, it's completely, totally toned. It, is, it almost looks like gun bluing. Um, the only part that looks silver is the hood. Every other part of this is like a bluish, dark shade. And it's just not going to work for a replacement Spectra Flame color. And yeah, I'm, I want to go with a dark color, but... Even that's not going to look good. And and certainly, I have to have the hood and the body 
matching. Otherwise, it's going to show. So, yeah, this car, that, that gold paint somehow was hiding the fact that this is the single worst toned body I've ever seen. And I, I really don't know if I can save it. Uh, of course, I'm going to hit it with the brass bristle brush and see if I get any movement here at all. I'll get none. So that's not going to help. So the next thing I'm going to try is I'm going to take a green scotch bright pad to this and see if that will help. Nothing. So now it's time for the rotary tool, and the bit that I'm using is, it's like a, a scotch bright pad on the end of a, a, an attachment for the rotary tool. And normally that'll shine things up, but it really doesn't save the day here. At the end of the day, there's nothing left for it but to go and to zinc plate this car. It took about three 30-minute sessions to get this thing to be somewhat equal all around. Uh, now I just need to shine that up. Hopefully it'll work out. We'll see. So anyhow, we're going to go ahead and start by getting out some 4.0 steel wool, and we'll run it over the car because that that zinc layer gets to be kind of rough feeling, and it's this uh, dull gray so we'll go ahead and hit it with the 4.0 steel wool, but I got to be honest, it's really not shining up like cars normally do. Um, so I, I'm still kind of worried at this point. Anyhow, there's really nothing else I can do but keep pushing forward and hope that somewhere along the line things work out. So uh, I'm I'm moving on past the steel wool and I'm going to go to my beloved flits and see if it can work its magic here because uh, the car is starting to be consistent looking but it still looks like garbage okay so I'm going to dab some flits on here and I've got a new buffing wheel chucked up in the rotary tool and then I'm going to go ahead and start to buff this car out now normally this would really really work and and to be honest, it just isn't. Um, it still looks rough and bad. It it just doesn't look good. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to be a little more aggressive. I'm going to use a little more flits than I normally do. And I'm going to use a little more speed and pressure on the buffing tool. And lo and behold, I finally get some breakthrough. And I'm starting to get some sheen to this body. I think maybe I have gotten to where I need to be. So all I need to do now is buff it out with a soft cloth and we'll see if we've got it. So at the end of the day, this was a lot of work, but it paid off in spades. Look at the shine on this car. And best of all, it's consistent across the entire car. The hood matches the body. Everything looks great. It's really, really shiny. I've finally gotten past this. But let me tell you, it really put up a struggle. Uh, and, and and honestly, I've never seen a body this toned and messed up ever. And, and really, I, I was wondering if I was going to be able to salvage this. I thought briefly about taking another one apart uh, to get a body, but ended up not having to. Hooray for me. Okay, so with the car finally shined up, I can head over to the paint booth. And because of all the work that I've had to done, I really, really gave this a super good cleaning using some isopropyl alcohol. Uh, I rubbed it down a couple times, made sure it was thoroughly dry, uh, made sure there was no schmats left on the car that would inhibit the paint from doing its thing. Now, I've decided that I'm going to paint this olive. And I can't take credit for that idea. I saw a picture of an olive Hot Wheels Firebird, and it was stunning. So I'm just mimicking the picture I saw. Uh, again, I'm going to be using paint from the Redline Shop olive paint. I'm going to lay it down using my normal techniques with the tag coat, medium coats, and then keep going until I get to where the color is that I want. 
and uh, put on some nice wet coats, get a nice smooth glossy finish, and it's going to look fantastic. So just a tip, remember, you need to creep up on the color you're shooting for because this Spectraflame paint, you're going to go through many variations of the color. And you need to leave some room there at the end to put down your wet coats. So creep up on the color when you're just short of it, then get your wet coats down and let it dry. Okay, so while the uh, body is drying, I can go ahead and turn my attention to the rest of the car now. And uh, we're going to go ahead and break out my Flitz calcium remover and the base. We're going to throw it in the little Tupperware container, give it a few spritzes. And really, that's about all it takes. The, the worse it is, the longer you can leave it. But it really doesn't take very long and then we can go ahead and run over and wash this all off. And then when we get back to the sink, we'll dry it. And we'll go ahead and brush it out with the brass bristle brush. Okay, so that part's going really well. Now we can go ahead and turn back to flits. We'll smear some flits all over the base and break out the rotary tool again. And we'll really get this base all shined up and beautiful looking. It's going to look like new when we're done and it's really going to set off this casting. Now after the rotary tool we're going to buff this out and I like to use one of those microfiber cloths that has like the two levels on it, one on one side and one on the other. Uh, and I use the, the shaggier side to really buff this out because those little pieces of the towel will get down into the nooks and crannies and and I work it from different directions I'll, I'll go the long way I'll go sideways I'll go in circles to make sure that I get all of the different places and then once I'm happy with that then we'll go ahead and seal the base up using my renaissance wax again it's just smear it on with your finger rub it in completely make sure everything's covered and we'll buff this out again using the same cloth and again I like to use the, the craggly side to really get in there and, and I, I work it in a lot of different directions and once I've got it all nice and shiny again, we can go ahead and put it to the side and we'll get ready to do the wheels here. Yes, the base needs its wheels, but every now and then I kind of do things in the right order and since I have all the polishing stuff out, let's turn our attention really quickly and hit up this windshield. Now, I don't want to take it off the interior, so I'm not going to. I've washed everything off, and I'm just going to use the flits and a cotton swab, and I'm going to go ahead and polish this out in place. I really honestly believe that it's glued to the plastic interior, and I don't want to mess with that because I'm worried with that piece that broke off. If I mess with it, the windshield won't hold in anymore. All right, I don't know if I have a spare one, so I'm just going to leave it all together, polish the windshield, and call it a day. Okay, so now we can go ahead and get to the wheels. And there is no way in the world I am not putting the large deep dish chrome wheels on the back of this bad boy. I'm going to go with the large in the back and the, the smalls in the front, and this is going to be an, just the prototypical 70s hot rod car that I grew up with. It's going to look fabulous. This car is just begging for those large wheels. Anyhow, um, in, in a, you know, I've got great axles, I've got great hubs, and I don't want to damage them, uh, especially not at this stage of this build. So I'm cutting these old ones off. I don't need them. They're garbage. Cutting them off, get rid of them, and then we can press the new ones into place. Okay, so what I do to put the new wheels on is I push them on just a little bit on all four axles. Then I'll go back and I'll back that up, back up the hub with my alignment tool and push the wheel on the rest of the way. And this makes sure that all my wheels are spaced the same all the way around. Works out fantastic and it helps me keep from damaging any of the axles. 
And just like that, we're putting this car back together. Okay, I'm really digging this paint, and I hope the car looks as good as I think it will. So we've got the casting. We're putting the interior with that attached piece of glass back in, uh, trying to be careful because the last thing I want to do here is break anything and damage that piece of glass. Um, so we're just being gentle, getting that line back up. Then we'll take the base, hook it back on, and secure it all with some screws. So there you have it. The car is looking amazing. It just needed a little bit of paint. I had to paint in the grill and the taillights, and this one is done. Well, there it is, my custom Firebird in olive. I think it looks amazing. Okay, first of all, the, the body came out better than I ever had a right to expect from where I started. Um, it looked like somebody had blued it, like, with, like you do on a gun or something like that. I, I just, I had no hope for that body. And it was a lot of work to get it freshened up, but it came together. And, uh... I love the big fat tires on the back, the deep dish look, the fat and skinnies. Just, I love everything about this car. It came out fantastic, and I hope you loved it too. If you did, please give this video a giant thumbs up, click subscribe, and don't forget to squish the notification bell so you never miss one of my videos. As always, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below because I do love to hear from you guys. Okay, I have so much to do. I gotta get out of here. Until next time, this is Paul from Fat Guy Productions saying, be good.